There's a Python library called disk cache that uses SQLite under the hood to basically give you a persistent dictionary. And it's a really neat trick and more people should know about it. So let me show you. So maybe as a place to get started, right? I have a function over here that fetches something from the internet. So something from the Star Wars API, number can go in and request is made. Now, one thing you could do to maybe speed this up is you could go to func tools and from it, you could import this LRU cache and you could add that on this function. And that way, if you were to rerun the function more than once, you're gonna notice that it's cached. So let's actually run this function in a new cell. We run it once, it takes about 150 milliseconds. If I run it again now, then it's gonna grab it from the cache and it only takes 14 milliseconds. So this is really cool. The downside is that if you were to refresh Python, restart it, then this cache is lost. This is very much something that lives in memory. So instead what you could do is you could say, well, I want something that's a bit more permanent. I'm gonna add a new cache. I'm gonna use the cache object from this library called disk cache over here. And instead of referring to this LRU cache, I can now say cache.memorize if I memorize. Yeah, that's the one. And if I were now to run this again, before it was 200 milliseconds and after it's 19 again. And, and every time I hit run, you know, you can see it's still pretty darn quick. So this is already super duper nice. Also, if you want, there's a local folder. This corresponds with the name local that I added here for this cache. And lo and behold, we can see that there's a SQLite database. So no magic, this information is stored there. And I suppose also just for good measure, let me just restart this notebook, right? Restart. The notebook has now restarted. And when I look at how fast this runs, it's only four milliseconds again, because it's fetching it from the cache from SQLite. Now, one thing about that cache is you can also use it not as a decorator, but as a object to interact with directly. So I could set a key of A to be equal to one. And then I can also kind of use this cache as a dictionary. I can fetch A from it. I can also make assignments this way, by the way. And then if I were to fetch it, it's updated. Another thing you could do that's also pretty fancy is you can also set the key of A to be equal to one, but you can also set it to expire. Let's say 10 seconds. So that's now good. Cache value of A, it's still equal to one. But after a while, you're gonna get a key error because there's an expiry and, and this is a nice feature because you can add logic on top of this. If the key doesn't exist, then add it in, set a new expiry date, you get a bunch of control. You can also use the get method if you're interested and if the key is then missing, then you can also return a default value. And again, this is just a demo, but here you go. If you are doing any form of scraping or anything where Oh, it'd be a shame if the process died and we'd lose all the information. SQLite is super nice and this is just the simplest integration with it for caching purposes. It is super neat. The use cases go well beyond just caching, but it's a nice library. More people should use it. It's the best.